So that, my friends, is the Champions League final set for 2023 in Istanbul. It will be Man City versus Inter Milan. Ooh. It is some final, but not in the way that you would normally think, and possibly not in the way that we've seen in previous years recently, and also 20 years ago and beyond. What does it mean for Manchester City? What does it mean for the Premier League? What does it mean for the team that finish outside the top four in English football? Well, there's a lot to unpack in this video, and with a huge result like that, we deserve, on a channel which is just getting started and needs your support and is building up towards bigger things, a sponsor. Tonight's video is sponsored by... Well, um, I'll tell you over there. Thank you, Lawrence. I'm in my real-life kitchen. For today's sponsor, HelloFresh. They are a fantastic and convenient solution to your cooking issues. Or, if you're like me and you actually love cooking, you love shopping, you love looking recipes up on the internet, I just like the solutions and alternatives that they offer. This is a sticky beef rice bowl and it took me all of 20 minutes to make. Quick scenario for you, the football is on in less than an hour. You've got to get your dinner in before then and you need to cook for more people than just you. HelloFresh, straight out the bag, straight into the pan. And within 20 minutes, you can have a meal that people think you spend ages on. Not only do you get control of the TV for the night, football, but you also don't have to do the washing up. Silence whilst you watch it. Here's a tip. Keep the bag that the food comes in, put your waste in it, put it straight in the bin, and you're good to go. The main issue that I have when I cook is I overcook and definitely cook way too much, even for a family of four. So these perfectly portioned pieces of food not only let you control and understand what it is that you're eating, but they also make sure that you don't buy too much and waste food, sort of a thing. They've got veggie. Mm. Veggie. They got veggie, and of course, for meat eaters like me, they got great stuff too. And for the weeks when the family go away, you can cancel, pause, or change address at any time. Here's my real tip. If you're looking to impress someone with your cooking, this kind of thing is what impresses people. They're well put together dishes that actually taste good with good ingredients that actually are healthy. So for 60% off your first order and 25% off your next eight boxes after that, use my code, which is this, or go down to the link in the description. Either way, you'll be helping the channel massively. Genuinely, I hope you get as much use out of it as I have. It's been amazing to be able to cook my family just in easy ways like this. Maybe you'll get the same. Give it a try. Send me your food pictures. I love getting food pictures and let's get on with the video. Thanks HelloFresh. That's right. So there is a link in the description just down there. Go take a look at it. I've already given you all that information. Let's get on with the great football stuff. Thank you HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. It's been a weird Champions League season but also a fantastic one. There have been some big results. There have been some really interesting teams in there as well. I think a lot of people kind of thought that you would have got a Napoli or a Benfica going further than they did. I underestimated Inter Milan before and frankly I think a lot of people probably didn't think that City would get this far based on the earlier performances this season and that's probably fair maybe they didn't see a City team that were clicking and sometimes you doubt whether a team can do that within the regular season right the regular season what am I and my point is that Pep Guardiola has pulled off something actually quite brilliant in getting Man City to the final I know they've spent a lot of money I know there are all these different things you can level at them but they were so imperious. They really stuck it to Real Madrid at the Etihad this evening. They re and I mean like absolutely dominated Real Madrid. A team that has dominated in sometimes a quite passive way, but also a very smart, undermining, cerebral fashion. They Real Madrid have done that this season. They've done that to other English opposition. They've done that to some of the better teams out there in Europe this year. And Real Madrid were the biggest threat to Man City's possible treble this season. The gutting thing about it for a lot of people is it, it showed how vulnerable that, that Real Madrid side are. But possibly you thought that Real Madrid would have given some form of idea of how to take apart this Man City side, right? Maybe it is Vinicius. Nope, they didn't use Vinicius in the way that you should against Kyle Walker. They just let him run at Kyle Walker, try and run him beyond Kyle Walker. Way too simplistic. The, in the middle, they just dominated Benzema, the far side. They just decided, hey, we'll just use whoever it is on Luka Modric. Modric is just going to misplace a load of passes. It's frustrating to see, but Carlo Ancelotti, I'm sorry, your time comes to an end in a season where you've really not won the important things. But you've still done some special stuff. Carlo, thank you very much. Maybe another video on Carlo another time. Tonight is Man City's night, but at the same time, I ask the question, how often does an underdog not lose or win the Champions League final? Because it's kind of... That question you need to ask is how do they, how do Inter not lose this? 
Previous years, more recently, it's been won by a 1-0 scoreline very consistently, actually, for the last three seasons, going all the way back to the PSG buy-in season, which was an unusual one in itself. Even there, you could argue... And by the way, the, your definition of underdog has to be a definition where one side is clearly, like, not at the same level as the other. So, you know, we're not talking about PSG versus Bayern. We're not talking about that really strong Liverpool side versus Real Madrid, even though we knew that potentially this Liverpool side, due to their huge season, were underdogs. We're not talking about Liverpool versus Real Madrid at any point, really, despite the fact there is a slight misbalance. Both of those sides seem probably better match, shall we say, than Man City and Inter. And weirdly, like Man City and Inter are kind of like a poetic final in that sense. They have a bigger devil-based opposition in their city, both of them. Both of them play in the blue half of that city or the blue quarter or the blue, whatever you want to call it. Both of them arguably represent the more working class element of the fans, though you could argue Manchester United also element uh, have huge elements of working class. But Man City in particular, I think, kind of lean into that. And considering that they're in what they consider to be the real Manchester, there's probably a lot going on there as well, right? But and, and with that, Inter are, by the way, the, the kind of working class club of Milan. They're the real, what, the, what is seen as the, the real team of Milan rather than AC, who is seen as the more middle class and aspiring, right? So it's a great final. Secondly, it's in Istanbul, an iconic Champions League place in the first place for English sides, but also just Istanbul is just, it's historic. It's one of those places you kind of want to play a game because it's like, you know, both teams can get as many fans out there as possible. And I'm, I'm, Istanbul is such a welcoming city, but then they've got to get to that stadium. Then they've got to like, that you, you can't do this. I know that in Liverpool, there's AC Milan, there are way more Liverpool fans. But how do you then fill that stadium tonight with that atmosphere at the Etihad, which I've been in that Champions League fan atmosphere at the Etihad. It is a... I wouldn't call it intimidating. I wouldn't call it intimidating in the way that I find Old Trafford intimidating or the way that I find possibly even the Bernabeu kind of swing games intimidating. I think they're intimidating because it's Pep Guardiola and Man City not necessarily because it's Man City fans being intimidating. I just don't think they're an intimidating fan base. And that's, that, you know, it's not a slight on them. It's not me saying, you know, they don't have an atmosphere or whatever. I just don't think they are that kind of intimidating. I think Real Madrid were intimidated by Man City and Pep Guardiola and possibly the more recent form that was indicative of where Real Madrid were going anyway in this tie. But were they intimidated by the atmosphere? Was Modric misplacing balls because it felt intimidating by Man City? I very much doubt that. Though, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I still don't think I'm wrong. Along with that, what is it that we have to see from Inter Milan in this final? What is it that we will see from Inter Milan in this final? These guys have effective attackers, a really effective midfield. They're very good at sitting deep. They're very good at counter-attacking. They're very good at frustrating the opposition. They're very good with interchangeable little, interchangeable little uh, Swiss army knife type pieces. Oh, well, maybe we'll bring on Lukaku. Maybe we'll bring on Dzeko. It's Dzeko versus old side for the treble. Do you know what I'm saying though? Maybe it won't be a treble by then. Man United, that one's on you. Arsenal, good try. But the point is that along with all of that, right, we are now seeing that Man City are, are being lauded within Europe. They are feared within Europe. They are a side that I think other English teams have filled that gap, but Man City currently hold it. Now in England, maybe they don't get that level of respect. I think Inter Milan will respect the City side, right? But they will be the up underdog playing up. But you kind of get my point here. Like in England, there's a whole preconception about Man City and possibly with Real Madrid tonight, what we'll hear from the Real Madrid fans is huge spend, uh, Galactico level of spend. We'll hear money, money, money. We'll hear the Premier League is more dominant. So of course Real Madrid lost to them. We'll hear we'll get Jude Bellingham. So you guys, you know, see you next season. We'll, you'll hear we're the old money. You're the new money. We're the, all the rubbish that you normally hear from a hurt fan base that don't really know how to deal with loss in the first place. And most of them are eight year olds in the country that don't probably like share the, you know, like kind of idea of what it is that Real Madrid is in the first place. They, they've never been to this place. It is people who are nebulous fans. 
which is a perfectly fine thing to be, but it doesn't mean that they are the, the Madrid, like they aren't Madrid, Madrid, if that makes sense. They're not Madrid, Madrid in the way that city are city, city. Although very similar, actually, to Man City fans in the States. They're taking over the States right now. They're not city, city fans. Do you know what I mean? They are whatever, whatever fans. There are similar fan bases for so many teams globally, but the more recent kind of bourgeois set of people, the Real Madrid fans who've picked up because they're fair weather, the City fans who've picked up because they're doing well at the moment, they're not, you know, they're not like the 20 year fans is what I'm saying. Do you get what I mean? And that, that does have something to do with geography and the amount of time that you support those teams. It's just true. I'm not the same San Antonio Spurs fan. I'm not the same, well, clearly not, I'm wearing a Chelsea jersey, but I'm not the same San Antonio Spurs fan that someone who lives in San Antonio would be. I'm not the same New York Giants fan that a New Yorker was going to be. It's just a fact. I've not lived in that city. I've not experienced what those people have been through. Though I'm very happy for Wemby. Just, you know what I'm saying, right? But come the final, you will see genuine Inter Milan fans versus genuine City fans. Both will travel very well, put it that way. Like in these kind of final stadiums, you it's not like a question of, oh, will they fill it sort of thing. There's a load of corporate boxes, sure. But like the City, uh, the city set will fill their end. The Inter set will fill their end. Do you know what I mean? There is, I think such an underdog nature now to what Inter Milan have to achieve. And Pep Guardiola has been so imperious. City are clearly so full of belief. There is such a raison d'etre, should we say, to get this done, to impose their true dominance on everyone else. Because that is what Pep has struggled for acknowledgement of in recent years, the dominance, those kind of things, that I think Man City have to be considered not only vast favourites, but basically having their name half on the trophy already. And I know like people are going, well, maybe Pep will overthink it. You're underestimating Inter Milan. It's nothing to do with Milan. It could be anyone in that final. It could even have been Real Madrid in that final. Maybe Real Madrid are the one team maybe you wouldn't consider. And maybe an English team would be a team you wouldn't consider there. Milan have been very dominant recently. And you could argue that Milan have actually found more, as much form or very good form in more recent weeks, earlier on in the season, you know, they got beaten in the group stages. They drew impressively with Barcelona. They got the, uh, you know, Munich were a different team then, but you get what I mean. There, there was there was a reason why Inter Milan were Inter Milan and they were sort of working their way up to this point, right? It's pretty interesting to see them dominate so effectively that AC Milan side and put themselves through in the same way that tonight City dominated Real Madrid. And let's not get it twisted here. Real Madrid got absolutely schooled by Pep Guardiola and City. Gundogan, fantastic. Bernardo Silva, right place, right time, but read the game perfectly. Haaland is, has just become such an effective space maker for everyone else in that team. And Jack Grealish deserves so much credit because of his movement, because of the way he carries the ball, because of the way he didn't fear this Madrid team, because of the way that he chose to carry the ball in exactly the path that you can tell that Pep Guardiola almost mapped out for him in between those Real Madrid players. In the same way that Carl Walker deserves such credit, in the same way that Akanji, not really goal scorer, but the goal scorer on the night, went from being, hey, this guy could be good, to he's, he, like Pep Guardiola's man management, I want to say, of this guy has just taken him levels. So what do you do with that? They're, they are catchable, don't get me wrong. Like there will be teams next season that challenge City that will beat them. But this season they're in such fine form. There's a possibility this weekend they win the Premier League. Pro there's a probability this weekend they win the Premier League, right? It's incredible to think of what Pep Guardiola has done within one season. Now, the World Cup, I think, had a bit of an impact on this. I think Pep Guardiola knew this was a season to be managed, and arguably, this one's been in the mail, right? We knew that City were coming good at some point under Pep Guardiola. It's just when, not a question of... It's a question of how, not, you know, not if. So it's going to be interesting to see what you guys think about this one. Um, I think City is so dominant, but I'll be so interested to see how compressed Inter Milan are, how long they keep them off. If Milan score, I think City still believe. If City score, I think it's difficult for Milan to believe. But 
I will be going through in a future video every Champions League final in the iteration of it being the Champions League and showing you where there's possibility of hope. It, we may have to go as far back, by the way, as 2005. The last Istanbul final. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm good. Congratulations, Man City. You were by far the better team. And I mean, by far the better team this evening. It, it doesn't give me pleasure, but at the same time, the experiment of Pep Guardiola or all these kind of things deserves huge credit. But we said that, I think I said this a couple of years ago on the kickoff, right? Within the experiment that City are doing here in buying a modern side, modernizing them, bringing them into the 21st century, all these kind of things, the origin story will be forgotten in that sense. It may be brought up from time to time, but when Chelsea spend a lot of money, when Barcelona have spent a lot of money, when Bayern are so imperious in their country, when Juve are collapsing, when Man United have spent close to, if not more than what City have, net spend and overall, like, on the pitch. What do you then say? Is it possible to discount this? Is it that City were the believers? All these kind of things. Or am I being naive and overlooking serious, I mean like very serious long-term narratives in order to oversimplify what football is, which when a team wins, they can do because the winners very often write those history books. Well, now it's time for Pep Guardiola to be that winner and write that history book. Inter, yeah, I feel like I'm in that Star, you know that Star Wars scene where Leia like pops out of the communicator thing and she goes, help me Obi-Wan, you're our only hope. That, that is you, Romelu. That is you, Martinez. That is you, Inter. Good luck, Inter. You're going to need it. Are they more of like a Han Solo type? What are Inter in terms of the Champions League? Like, are they, are they, are they Obi-Wan? I don't think they are because Obi-Wan's like got control of the fours. Are they Han Solo? Do they have like a Chewbacca type in the team? Are they, is, who's C-3PO? Which one's R2-D2? Do you know what I mean? And who does that make Pep Guardiola? Of course that makes Pep Guardiola the Emperor guy, or does it make him Vader? No, wait, does that make, is Harland Anakin? Oh, in a way it kind of works, do you know what I mean? The movie analogies always annoy people, but the movie thing kind of works here. Who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? Who's ta like, who's invaded Tatooine? Did Tatooine get invaded? I don't know enough about Star Wars storylines. I remember things from a childhood. Let me know in the comments below uh, what the, I think it kind of works. Into Milan are the, uh, the Jedi. Are they? Or are, is Pep Guardiola the Jedi because he's mastered the Force? Or is he mastered it to a, like a, a daunting degree where you sort of go, oof, that's... Bro, you got burned on that planet. Is that planet Bayern? Anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to know your movie analogies. Is there a better movie analogy than Star Wars for this? I will uh, chat to you guys in a little while. Much love. Bye.